Hey there, I am glad you're back. I got something interesting this time, and this one was because I kind of got a little ticked off last year during Black Friday, so I thought I would give you some content relating to Black Friday sales. So last year during Black Friday, I saw somebody post some things saying that it's, pro it's not okay to discount your stuff. Discount to run Black Friday sales, essentially. It's not okay to run Black Friday sales because it damages your brand. And I was like, good grief, then there's a lot of damaged brands out there if that's not okay. I started to do a little research. I thought, okay, I wonder who's doing Black Friday sales and who isn't doing Black Friday sales. I went through a whole bunch of luxury and premium brands and I did a little analysis and prepared a little quiz for you that you can check out in this video. I'm also gonna give you a little history of Black Friday, where it all came from and uh, then you can score your quiz and put the quiz results for you down in the comments. So we're gonna have a little fun, something different today. And at the crux of it, we're gonna talk about whether it's okay to discount your services or not. Because essentially that's what Black Friday is. It's discounting your services. Can you do it? Should you do it? Does it damage your brand? Let's check it out. Black Friday started kind of back in 1924. I did a little research on this. It's not Mike Janda. I wasn't born in 1924. I don't know what was going on then. But 1924, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade started in New York City. And during that parade, it brought a lot of people into the city. And then those people after the parade stayed and started shopping. So that was the big shopping weekend. And that's where that all started. Now, in the 1950s, in Philadelphia, there was the Army-Navy football game the day after Thanksgiving. It became a tradition to have the Army-Navy game on that Friday after Thanksgiving. And all of the people from the game would leave the stadium after the game and then start shopping in Philadelphia. And the police officers had to work extra long shifts they didn't get to take the day off. And then there were things like shoplifting and big crowds and all of the trauma that we've seen over the years with Black Friday sales and people rushing to get the sale and all that kind of stuff. And they, the police in Philadelphia were the, the ones who labeled it Black Friday. And that name kind of stuck. And then that's been the tradition. In the United States, the day after Thanksgiving, a holiday in the US, we go and have this big shopping bonanza. Is it okay for your brand to run a Black Friday sale or does it damage your brand? Let's look at a couple of things about why people buy in the first place. You have to understand some of the psychology behind purchase decision making before we can answer that question. Why do people buy stuff? The very bottom of a purchase decision-making tree is price. This is the very bottom. This is the people who shop based on price will go to the clearance rack of the clearance store. I know one of them. I'm not going to call names, but I know somebody who does this. They go to the clearance rack of the clearance store. They're looking for the best price. And some people are motivated by that. This is where Black Friday sales come. It's like the lowest price of the year. We're going to drive home all the sales we can during that lowest price of the year sale. It typically, not, not typically, some, some businesses thrive on, on low price guarantees. In fact, I did a search on Google for low price guarantee, got 552 million results. And you can see here, the very first thing was Lowe's, which is a home improvement store, has a low price guarantee. Home Depot, home, low price guarantee. Um, New York Times had an article that ranked pretty high, but Best Buy, low price guarantee. Discount Tire, Car Parts, Brands Mart, USA, Priceline, Best Price Guarantees, Choice Hotels, Back Country, Dick's Sporting Goods, Target, Mattress Firm, Carnival Cruise Line, low price guarantee. Hilton, Hilton.com has a low price guarantee that if you find a price cheaper on any site, they're gonna match it for you through their site. Best Western, PC Richard. So I didn't go too deep into this. I just scrolled down. Those were the ones that started. All of these companies are advertising a low price guarantee. And then of course we know that when we go to Amazon, 
Amazon.com, I shop there all the time and I usually am looking for the low price or expect the low price on Amazon. They're competing head to head with Walmart and Walmart has been the low price leader for a long time. Now keep in mind that these are great businesses. They're huge businesses and they compete on price. They even have good brands. Walmart has a pretty good brand now. They've done some rebranding over the years. It's a pretty good brand. Amazon, pretty good brand, and they're competing on price, and they're competing with sales all the time. So it's not that running a sale is gonna make you have a bad business. That's just not the way it is, because some great businesses run based on low price guarantee. Uh, there's even dollar stores, like the Dollar Tree right here. Dollar Tree. That's all low price. Everything's a dollar. And I think it's like the dollar fifty tree now that we've had a couple years of, of inflation happening. But dollar tree, low price guaranteed. There's no guarantee. You just know that you're going to buy the junk in there cheaper than you will get the junk anywhere else. Okay, the next level up on why we make a purchase decision is based on convenience. People will pay more because it's closer or fastest option that express shipping thing. I do this all the time. I, I buy from express shipping, priority shipping, because I want it faster. We pay a premium for it. Walgreens has a Walgreens on every street corner. You go to Walgreens and buy a gallon of milk, it might cost you $5 for a gallon of milk. You could drive a half a mile to the grocery store and get that gallon of milk for $3.50. Why do you buy it at Walgreens? because you're in Walgreens picking up your prescriptions and the gallon of milk is right there and you'll pay more for the convenience of buying it when you're there rather than going and buying it at another store, driving, parking, all the hassle. Uh, Amazon, I look at prior, Prime Overnight. I, it used to be two day shipping, next day air. Prime Overnight. That's my favorite on Amazon. I buy stuff with Prime overnight. Sometimes I'm just like laying in bed at night and I'm, it's 10 o'clock and I'm like, whoa, I can get this and they'll deliver it by 4 a.m.? Good, I'll buy that. And I, I make an impulse purchase decision based on the speed of delivering it to me. So they're competing here with convenience. Now I know Amazon, we talked about competing on price. They're also competing on convenience. Walmart, competing on price and convenience. Amazon is forcing Walmart to change their business model. You can now go to walmart.com, you can choose to have it shipped to you, pick it up or delivered to you. Delivered to you. They'll just do your grocery shopping. They'll deliver it to your house from the Walmart that's up the street from you. So they're competing for convenience and they expect that, in, in some cases, that people will pay more for the convenience of having it delivered or having it brought out to you at your car. Amazon has built tons of warehouses so that they can do this priority speed shipping. There are facilities like this all over the world, I assume. I know in the United States, they're all over the place. These packing facilities where they will go and they'll just drop your stuff off at 4 a.m. because it's in the facility that's just down the road from you. So they're warehousing tons and tons of popular product to be able to capitalize on convenience. All right, the next one up on this is quality. Some people will pay more because the quality is the best. You know it's gonna be the best quality. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola tastes better than Shasta-Cola. It's better. I'll pay more for Coca-Cola than I will for Shasta-Cola because the taste is better, the syrup is better, something is better, the quality of the drink is better to me. Now. Papa John's Pizza markets their pizza under the better ingredients, better pizza. That's the angle they're playing. It's a quality play. You want better ingredients and better pizza, that's Papa John's. In differentiation to that is Little Caesars with the hot and ready. It's five bucks. It's sitting in the oven. You just walk in, you don't even have to order it. The pizza is worse, in my opinion, than Papa John's Pizza. It's not better ingredients, it's worse ingredients, um, worse pizza, but it's more convenient. And so we buy from Little Caesars. They built a business around being a convenient choice. Meanwhile, Papa John's tries to build a business around being 
better ingredients, better pizza. I'll pay a little more for the quality of Papa John's than I will for the speed of Little Caesars. Okay, the next one. Brand. Now, this is the top of my little pyramid for, for here. People will pay more because the brand means something. I did a search on Amazon, found a Nike t-shirt for $41.02. I don't know why that's priced that way. It's 8% off. 8%. Where did that come from either? 8% off of $44.72. So it's $41.02 for a shirt. I also did a search for cheap black t-shirt and found the Amazon Essentials crew neck undershirt black t-shirt pack of six for $25.90. $4.32 per shirt. Now check that out. We've got what is likely almost an identical black t-shirt. One has the Nike logo on it. One does not. One is priced at $41. One is, pri one is priced at $4.32 or a six pack for $25.90. Why will somebody pay for the Nike logo shirt when it's essentially just gonna keep them warm just like the black t-shirt is going to. It's just gonna be something on top of their body. Why will they pay more for it? Because in their perception, the brand means something. The brand means something, so we pay a premium because the brand means something. Okay, I looked up a bunch of luxury and premium brands. Here's a smattering of logos. I just found this somewhere. Somebody had put a, together a logo collage of a bunch of logos of luxury brands. You got Prada and Chanel and Mont Blanc and Dior and Patagonia and Callaway, Versace, all down that list. What I did for this little game that we're gonna play today is a little quiz on which of these brands runs a Black Friday sale and which ones don't. Now, Black Friday sales are all about this price-driven shopping. It's all about low price, get the people in the door, sell mass quantities of product. That's the driver on Black Friday sales. Brand, is it okay for a luxury brand or a premium brand to run a Black Friday sale or does that damage their brand reputation? That's the question. We're going to tackle that by looking at some examples. Let's get ready to rumble. So this is the game. Does this brand Black Friday? And here's the list. We've got first on the list, Mont Blanc. I'm going to go through this quickly because I don't want to bore you to death. There are 24 companies here. Does this brand Black Friday take out a little notepad or get a little text doc or something on your computer and start playing the game and drop your score into the comments? How many of these did you get right? Do you think that the pen, the, the high quality fancy pen Mont Blanc, do they run a Black Friday sale? Yes or no? We're gonna hit their site, boom. Yes, they've got Cyber Week. Explore the exclusive offer on select items for a limited time only. Happy holidays from Mont Blanc. So they do a Black Friday sale. We're gonna put an X into Mont Blanc. Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, fashion brand. Do they do a Black Friday sale? Boom, no, they do not do a Black Friday sale. The holiday season with Louis Vuitton. They have holiday related marketing, but it's not a Black Friday sale. Next, tailor-made high-end golf clubs. My golf clubs are tailor-made, by the way. Um, I don't play a lot of golf anymore. I did when I owned my business, but not so much anymore. Tailor-made, Black Friday sale, yes or no? Here we go, 20% off personalized products. Up on the top, you've got earn triple rewards, tailor-made holiday shopping now through November 28th. So we've got discounted uh, materials or product until November 28th. Now, by the way, these are all from last year. I screenshotted all these last year. If you look up these companies this year, you may see something different. They may have opted into Black Friday or opted out, but I screenshotted all these last year when I was mad because of the advice that you shouldn't run a Black Friday sale. I was like, man, let's see who isn't running a Black Friday sale. All right, Titleist, another high-end golf brand do they have a Black Friday sale? The answer is no. As of last year, they didn't run a Black Friday sale on their website. I thought that was interesting. So it's okay for TaylorMade. It's not okay for Titleist in their own brand marketing perception. Tiffany and Company, 
high-end jewelry. No Black Friday sale. They do have how Haley does the holidays. So they, they target holiday shoppers, but not with a Black Friday discounted sale. You have Apple. Does Apple run Black Friday sales? They don't do a lot of sales. Does Apple run a Black Friday sale? Answer is yes. Now through November 28th, get an Apple gift card when you buy an eligible product. So they're bundling something on. They don't discount their product price, but they give you something for free on top of that. And you'll see some brands do that. Instead of running a Black Friday sale, they'll just give you an, a benefit or bonus on top of your purchase. Calvin Klein, high-end, fancy fashion brand, Black Friday. Yes, extra 60% off sale, 50% off apparel, 30% off underwear and accessories. You got some stinky underwear that you got to replace. This is your time, 30% off. Okay, I don't know why I said stinky underwear. I, don't, I was thinking of my kids, maybe. Maybe my kids. Okay, um, that's Calvin Klein. So Calvin Klein is a yes. Gucci, does Gucci, who's a competing brand to Calvin Klein, do they run a Black Friday sale? The answer is no. But they do offer something for convenience, a limited time, enjoy complimentary 45-day extended returns on all orders. So they're giving you a benefit in there, an extended return. I would put that in my convenience targeting um, little bucket. That's where I would stick that 45 days to return something, but not a Black Friday sale. Armani, Armani, does Armani run a Black Friday, Friday sale? Big question, here we go. Yes, Black Friday sale on Armani.com. Discover Armani's Black Friday sale, Black Friday, don't miss Black Friday at Armani, blah, blah, blah. Armani high-end fashion brand, Black Friday sale is fine for them in their brand perception. Balenciaga, Balenciaga, Black Friday scale or not? The answer is yes, no, just kidding. There is no Black Friday sale on Balenciaga. There's complimentary shipping on all orders and 45 day returns for orders placed between 1121 and 129. So they're playing the convenience play, but they're not reducing the price of their products. Now here's something interesting, Nordstrom, high-end retailer that carries Balenciaga and Gucci and Armani, I'm assuming on some of these brands, they carry a lot of high-end brands. Do they run Black Friday sale? And the answer is yes, Nordstrom runs Black Friday sales. And look at this, on the screen right here to the right, you have Balenciaga sandals that are usually $495 and now you can get them for $24. $247.50, 50 percent off. So Balenciaga was not running a Black Friday sale on their own site, but apparently it's okay to discount Balenciaga wares on Nordstrom's site on one of their retailers. So that's an interesting little um, nugget I learned when I was digging through this and, and how some people are handling this. All right, next, Ralph Lauren. Let's jump through these. Yes, enjoy 40% off when you spend 125. Cartier, the answer is uh, no. Order by December 21st for free de for delivery by de December 25th. There's not a discounted Black Friday sale here. Versace, Black Friday sale, yes or no? High-end luxury brand, the answer is yes. Shop the sales selection now up to 50% off. So they are running a discount on certain products. They're not marketing it as Black Friday, which I thought was interesting as well. I saw that in a couple of these. They're saying, hey, we've got a sale, but they're not saying it's Black Friday. So maybe they're trying to um, separate themselves from the brand of Black Friday being perceived as negative to their brand or something, I don't know. But that was just an interesting little observation. All right, the North Face, North Face Outdoor Outfitter, Yes, Black Friday, XPLR pass members get 25% off priced items. Prada, yes or no, Black Friday sale from Prada. The answer is no, but if you look up there, they've got delivery stuff, complimentary returns extended to January 31st. So another one playing on the convenience bucket. Next, Marmot, another outdoor outfitter. And the answer is yes, they run Black Friday sales. Let's go to the next one, Patagonia. This one's interesting. 
Did Patagonia run a Black Friday sale? Yes or no? This one, when you go to their site, this was at least last year, 2022, let's find a better way for Black Friday. And they have this little thing, Black Friday is a frenzy of deep discounts, limited time offers, and last ditch efforts, urging you to save by spending more. We're not doing that. Instead, we'd like to slow down and think about the bond we all build with our clothes. That's why we're committed to learning how to repair what we already own, shopping for used gear to keep it out of the landfill, or when you need something new, buying clothing and gear that's built for the long haul. We also have ways you can donate your items, money, skills to the issues that matter most to you. So I thought that was interesting, an interesting place. So they're participating in Black Friday as kind of the anti-Black Friday um, marketing messaging. All right, next, Garmin. Yes, Black Friday. No, Black Friday. The answer is yes, Garmin. Black Friday is a yes to me. I love Toomey bags. I got like five Toomey bags and I love my Toomey bags. And is it okay for them to be Black Friday? The answer is yes. Black Friday is okay. High-end bags. Mine's ballistic nylon will stop a bullet, they said when I bought my first Toomey backpack. I was like, that sounds good. I don't think I'm ever going to get shot at, but just in case somebody tries to shoot me in the back, I got that backpack on. I'm all set. Next, Lululemon high-end sporting apparel and merged into just apparel in general now too. Great brand, Black Friday all day long, Black Friday sale for Lululemon. Nike, Black Friday, yes or no? The answer is yes, that one's probably the easiest of the batch, we all know, but Nike, premium brand, $41 t-shirt, you got a Black Friday sale that they're running also. Rolex, Black Friday, yes or no? The answer is no. Rolex didn't even change their site at all. No like holiday promo or anything on their site last year at least. And then the final one is Citizen Watches. Citizen Watches, the answer is yes. So Citizen, in their own perception, is okay with Black Friday sales and Rolex is not. So that is your list of does this brand Black Friday, yes or no? And for the sake of your calculation, 15 out of the 24 brands that I researched that are premium and luxury brands had Black Friday sales. That's more than half, more than half. So if you're sitting there saying to yourself, should I run a Black Friday sale or should my client run a Black Friday sale and you're not sure, don't listen to the advice of someone who says, oh, don't, it's not good for, for a brand to discount because if you discount, they'll never buy again. I don't think that's true. I've found that I buy things all the way up until Black Friday and then after I buy things on Black Friday, I wait like a week and then I'm buying things again. I, we, I do think I do think that some people will pause on their purchase decision a week or two before Black Friday. And they'll say, you know what, this is something that's probably gonna be a Black Friday sale. I'm gonna hold off on this for now and see what the Black Friday sale is. I'm getting to that point right now. I'm making this video on December 10th, sorry, November 10th. November 10th, we got Black Friday in a couple weeks. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I'll probably wait on that guitar pedal or wait to buy that whatever thing I'm buying just to see if there's a Black Friday sale on it. And if there isn't, sometimes I just buy the thing on Black Friday anyway, just because I'm in the shopping zone. So back to the message here. Is it okay for you to, to run a Black Friday sale? Is it okay for your clients to run a Black Friday sale? Does it damage your brand? I would say if it's okay for Armani, it's probably okay for any brand. Doesn't seem to be okay for Rolex, and that's fine too. Some brands don't wanna do that, some brands do, but I don't think that it damages your brand so much that you'll never sell your products again because everybody will just wait for the sale. That's just not true. But you'll sell more during Black Friday and then wait another week or so, and all of a sudden you'll be selling things again. All right, a little different video today. I hope you like the quiz. I learned a lot in doing the research for this and uh, come back again. Hit the subscribe button and all.